All right, God bless you guys for joining us here at 18LC Studios. You're here to say the plane on Texas. We're going to pull, we're supposed to pull in right about, uh, right about 1040, uh, just about five minutes out. We're going to still go ahead and move forward. And uh, thank you guys for joining us here on The Word here at 18LC Studios. We're going to do this one all through our actually speaker program, as well as having our actually pod being shown out, uh, shown with us on tonight. Uh, we're not going to do any what we call audio. We're going to do all this through our actually um but no video. We're going to do all this to our audio service on tonight. But it's a pleasure for you guys to join us here at HNOC Studios. Let's get ourselves in position. We're going to be over in the book of 2 Kings. And we're going to look at some things over in the area of 2 Kings and that 6th chapter. But we're going to bring it really and come to a, you know, kind of a fruition of understanding in terms of what took place leading up to what happened in chapter 7 uh, in the book of 2 Kings. We're going to try to move through as quickly as we can. We're going to narrate the story just a little bit, but I want you guys to just stick with me and follow me close. We should get through this as we go forth here in HNLC Studios. Father God, we thank you and bless you. We honor you for this time, this moment we're spending with you as the word proceeds to go forth. And you declare and decree, Father God, that every word that proceeded out of your mouth will be a falling word. The word will not go back void. Father God, I ask you to bless the mouth of this priest as it go forth. Listen to me, Father God. Help me in the name of Jesus that I may clearly understand and know that the word you give me on the night is divinely planned through you and you only. Father God, we thank you. We bless you for this time and this moment as we continue to go forth to hear what you have to say that's coming from the kingdom of God. Father God, it's just such a blessing to be with you on tonight. And I thank you for giving me the strength to be with you on tonight that I may clearly see the things you're about to reveal through me concerning this word that you have given me to bring to your people on tonight. Father God, we bless you, we thank you, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray, Lord, amen. Let's take our Bibles, and let's get moving here tonight, and let's go over to the book of uh, 2 Kings. We're going to be running out of the, the King James Version. I'm going to let my music play out here just a little bit. It's not going to bother us. We're going to just go ahead and set ourselves up. We're going to hear what the Word of God is speaking here. It's coming from the kingdom of God. Let's go over here in the book of 2 Kings, and let's look over in the area of... Um, 2 Kings 6 and 8. And it says, The king of Syria warned against Israel and took counsel with the servants, saying, uh, Such and such a place should be my camp. Now, this particular word is more like a boasting word that's coming from this particular uh, uh, Syrian camp of people. And it's, it has to do with a whole lot in terms of dealing with this particular um, uh, work that took place with Elijah in Syria. And when we move on down in here, we talk about the possibilities that sometimes even um, several years after this particular um, healing, uh, which happened with Naaman, we're going to see the, the prophet uh, Elijah do some incredible things concerning this word as we go forth to hear what he has to say concerning this. It's coming from the kingdom. Now, in the ninth verse, and then the man of God said, uh, said unto the king of uh, Israel, saying, Beware. That thou pass not such place, for thither the Syrians are coming down. Now, what's happening in this particular area, you put it in a, a, in kind of in a natural sense, you know, we, we ask the question, how can they know? How can they know? You know, we read that word over in the book of Psalms, and Psalms talks about how um, in Psalms chapter 12, you take a, just a picky book of Psalms chapter 12, it tells you in Psalms chapter 12 that, a part of that particular area, it says how men says that, you know, our lips are our own. And it says that who's Lord over us. And then the word of God talks about how he would actually puff at them for the oppression of the poor and the shining of the needy. I believe it's in Psalms chapter 12. And it goes over there and talks about that in 12 and 4. You know, who have said with our tongues or who will prevail our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Now, this is a rebellious call to the point that people get so stuck in themselves to the point they feel that the prophetic word or the prophecy that they give, that God cannot override it because usually it's not a word from God because it's got to be cleared out by a true man of God. And in this particular case, Elijah is a true prophet of God, not to have to have these so-called wannabe prophets around him to buff him up and beef him up, but he's hearing a word in the spirit. And he warns the man and woman of God. He says, look here, don't come in this particular area of 2 Kings in this particular 6th uh, chapter, or 6th uh, chapter in the ninth verse. He said, don't come down here because beware that they pass through this place. They hear that the Syrians come down. Now, this is what is speaking here in 2 Kings 6 and 9. 
the man of God. Now he's speaking the prophetic word and he's hearing the words that the king of Syria is saying in his chambers to stop the work in which they're, got, they're, they're, uh, they're doing. Uh, it's going to come in against Samaria. Now, now I want to make sure we understand this part right here because I want to. I'm gonna switch it around, not just with the story, but I'm gonna get you to understand what the Word of God is speaking in terms of how this particular counselorship and how God says, according to the Book of Amos, if there be a prophet among you, I'll make it known unto you, not what men's prophetic word may say in terms of what they boast and get attention for themselves, but when you you hear prophetic word that's coming from the kingdom of God or from a man <clears throat> that claims to be a prophet of God, you're going to have to search it out. You're going to have to find out if it really be of God or not. In this particular area of scripture, and it says in the ninth verse once again, well, let's go back to the eighth verse. Then the king of Syria warned against Israel and took counsel with the servant saying, such and such place shall be my camp. Now, he's bragging about taking over this particular area of Syria. He want to try to uh, besiege Samaria, but Syria is making um, rules about the attack against the man of God in Samaria. And But there's a prophet who protects Samaria, and he's looking over them. And this king, in the 10th verse, said, the king of Israel said this place, which man of God told him or warned him of the servant, of uh, warn him and save himself. There is not once, twice, nor twice. Now, 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 listen to what this guy is saying here. The man of God sent the king of Syria, saying, "Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are coming down." He's warning them, and the king who's trying to start up a trap. Or besieged these men and women of God, held a word through the mouth of the prophet that warned them, look here, don't come this way. Don't come this way, because he speaks in the 10th verse, and the king of Israel sent, look here, sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him and saved himself not once nor twice. There in the 11th verse is that therefore the heart of the king of Syria was wroth. No, he tore his clothes, he was troubled. And the things which he called to the servant and said to them, you know, well, no, which one are you? He said, in, in, in layman's terms, I will read this out. He said to the servant, said unto them, will ye not show me which of you is king of Israel? And I was saying, how is this word? You know, who, what, which one of y'all is snitching? Which one of y'all is making known what I'm about to do? Who is the one that I need to not trust that I can slay him? Because the word of God decreed and declared, and the man of God saved their own life. In the twelfth verse, he said, And one servant said, No, my Lord, O king, but Elijah, the prophet that is in Israel, tells the kings in Israel the words that they speaketh in his bedchambers. Now, we're talking about when God really defends his own people against the very armies of the enemy. When the word of God says, touch not the anointed, do my prophets no harm. God has always got a man in place to help you or warn you before an uncommon event. But you're going to have to take heed. In this particular area of scripture, we go down here in the 13th verse, and he said, go spy out. Now, go spy here. Go spy where it is that they may send and fetch him. And he told him, saying, behold, he's in Doth. You know, he want to know where this guy is, which is Elijah, because he want to know who's spoiling his plans and how is it going about that he's actually um, uh, really terrorizing his plans of trying to go against this besiege that he's trying to go to here over in the Sumerian area. Now, in this particular era, the 14th verse, the Bible says in the 14th verse in 6 and 14, therefore, send he thy their horses and chariots and a great host that they may come by night and compress the city about. Now, this is how the enemy does. What's the prophetic word comes before in God? Remember that, that, that there's no weapon formed against you. This doesn't happen to do with the multitude of people or the multitude of men that's trying to bring this man in position. Because when you read on down in here, you're going to see where Elijah speaks to a servant who don't really understand the true power of God. And what am I saying about you? 
in this particular story that when something is spoken against you behind closed doors and you being a man of God, don't you think God is powerful enough to stop the very event of the enemy coming against you? Cause the word of God declares according to what is the Psalms 37, fret not thyself because of evil doers, nor ever thyself because of the workers of iniquity. Elijah talks about the process. As a matter of fact, Ezekiel talks about that in Ezekiel 33, put watchmen on the wall. Sometimes you need people praying for you and praying around you. That's going to be with in your group. Because whenever you're doing a great work, man or woman, God, you better declare and decree the enemy going to send something at you to try to conjure up something about you to make you feel opposite of the work and what you're doing. It happens all the time. Whenever a celebrity or a person of notoriety gets uh, full attention from the public eye, that's always coming to hypocrites. That's always coming to somebody to knock them down. That's just the way it is, whether it be in ministry, whether it be in celebrity, whether it be in sports, whether it be in business, whatever. It's always a knucklehead. Going to try to find something that try to bring you down to make you or accuse you of something that you may have done that God has already delivered you from. And you think about the deliverance from God when you make an oath to God. According to Romans 10, 8, 9, he says, confess with the word of God that's in your mouth. He said, what matter of fact, he says in Romans 10, 8, 9, if you go there with Romans 10, 8, 9, look what he says concerning the word that we're speaking right here over in the area of 2 Kings in dealing with Psalms 12. Look what he says over here. Let, let's go to that word over here. And he talks about the process in Romans. Look what Romans says. He talks about making a clear confession to Christ, who's the head of your life. And understanding that in the midst of you making that clear confession, God said he's not a God, that he's still not a son of a man, that he should have to repent. When he says in Romans 10, 8, he says that what saith the word of God is nearly in our mouth and in our heart. The word which we preach. Now, it's not just a word that you preach. The Bible said it's according to Romans 4 and 17. You as being a man of God who took the right oath in the right position, got the ability to call things out of position, in position, to be not doing their work. What am I saying? This word that took place over here in 2 Kings is the very thing that God protects you from. Because the word of God decreed and declared in the 14th verse, therefore he sent horses and chariots and a great host to encamp and compress that city. But before that, they gave word what the prophet is who's given words of information inside his bedchambers. Go back to first King, go back to second Kings, the sixth chapter, look at that particular 12 verse. And he said, one whose servants, he said, one of the servants said, no, my Lord, O King, but Elijah, the prophet is in Israel, tell it the kings, look what he said, the king of Israel, the things, the words, what you speaketh in your bedchamber. In other words, he's got a prophet, a warning mouth of God to help them. What do I just tell you that? When the enemy tries to come at you unaware, when they speak in closed negative things about you behind closed doors, the word of God says once again, fret not thyself because of evildoers, nor envy thyself because of the workers of iniquity. God is constantly be working on your behalf. That's why he decrees and declares for you to move forward in whatever maybe it's going on in and around your life that you may clearly know and understand that you got a God on your side and a God who will not lie. It goes on down here in this particular area of the uh, particular 13 verse. And he said, he said, go spy where he is that I may search, but that I may send and fetch him. Oh, you're going to send and fetch him, all right. And he said, go, my, go send and fetch him. And he said, and he told him, and he said unto him, he told him, saying, behold, he is in Dolph. They gave up the information. The spies said, well, he's in Dolph. If you want him, go get him. So therefore, the word of God said in the 14th verse, he sent their chariots, all of these men to try to surround the prophet of God. But in the midst of him surrounding the prophet of God, he got surrounded himself, him and his own army. But in the midst of the 15th verse, it goes to show you when you got to really know when you're walking with people that's of God, that when the enemy comes in like a flood, you really got to have everybody on point. In the 15th verse, when the servant of God said, rise early in the morning, when a servant of the man of God rise early in the morning, going forth and behold, the host compressed the city both horses and chariots and servants and said, ah, master, look at how should we do? How will we do? In other words, he said, he said, and he said, servant, he said unto him, ah, my master, how, how can this be? How can this be? Let's look at the words in the Amplified Edition. The Amplified Edition is going to bring some real good clarity on this. When the servant of the man of God rose early in the morning, the Bible says he went out and behold an army with horses and chariots around the city. 
Remember, we go back and we see what happened in the what the particular area of the of the fourteenth verse. Therefore, he sent his own army and his own chariots to compress the city, compress the man of God. The word came to him in the thirteenth verse that the prophet is in Dolph. The word came to him in the eleventh verse how he can how he how would he how did he know that this man was giving him words? Well, the man said, "No, Lord, it's, it's, the, it's the prophet Elijah in the twelfth verse." This man knows what you're saying. See, when you get, when the enemy comes at you, God is always going to give you a hand up. He's always going to keep you aware of the things that try to come against you and try to bombard you or put you out of position or try to knock you out of commission. God will give you a warning each and every time. That's if you walk upright. And your ways are pleasing to God. And you go back to Psalms 12, you make the oath when it says in Psalms, uh, in that Romans chapter 10, they say, what sayest thou, the word of God, near thee, in our mouth. That's when we begin to understand that, that we in the, we on the side with the armies of the Lord. The Bible says, what sayest thou, the word of God, is near you, in our mouth. This is when we come to the confession according to Romans 10, 8, 9. When it says that 10, 8, 9, he said, but if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Now, in the process of being saved, you got to understand what I'm telling you here, how these men are in the God, they're, they're, they're on God's team. So they are speaking words against the men of God, but there's a prophet in their land that's hearing everything in the spirit of what they're saying. So what this man is going to do, he's going to try to bully them. So he's going to send his little chariots and horses down at the Dolph, and he's going to try to surround the prophet Elijah. The word of God that says in that 15th verse, when the servant of the man of God was rose, rose early and going forth, behold, the host compressed the city, both, look at both with horses and chariots. Now, what that tells me, they bought everything that they had. They bought everything that they had, but they were no match for the power of God. Sometimes the enemy coming to you with everything he got, bad mouthing you, talking about you, putting you down, saying what you ain't. But God said, look here, don't worry about them. Your job is to move forward because the battle is not yours. The word of God says in that last half, and a servant said unto him, arise, my master. How shall we do? That lets me know that he wasn't aware of who he was rolling with. Sometimes you got to know who rolls in your group. Most of you out here got people around you, but you don't know them. When it comes down to having prayer and fighting against the battles of the enemy, the very people who you roll with, they ain't there for you. You want them there to occupy your space and time to make you feel like you got somebody rolling with you, but you don't have a communication or relationship with them at all. You really don't. You just know them. They pop up online, send your Valentine's, yada, yada, what they do, tell you all these things, and you don't even try to find to have a relationship with half of the people that's on your line. Now, me, I try to call back most of the people that's in my service. At least tell them a word of confirmation or a word of exhortation and letting them know, hey, I thank you for God me being with me, but I'm on my radio show. I can't get to tonight. Can we schedule another time to talk? They say, sure. And some just call right out without even having any kind of hesitation about me going to say, but right on in. Well, that lets me know I don't call them back because they, they interrupting the work of the God and it's trying to help you go forth to what you're doing. But they interrupting it. So that lets me know, well, why should I call that person back and have no kind of control about what's going on right now? So that tells me that person is not a really sharp or a really respected person. So that I eliminates that. So what I do, I do like the word of God says right here in the era of the 17th verse. Elijah prayed and said to the Lord, open the eyes that they may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold a mountain full of horses and chariots of fire around about Elijah. Their army got covered by the armies of the Lord. What they thought they had by sending them uh, try to down to Doth to try to cover this man of God, what the true word he has said, and this is how it happens sometime in the ministry. When you speak a true unadulterated word, the enemy gonna come at you. He's gonna always diametrically oppose the word of God to the point to make him seem educational and find some kind of term educationally to bring your word to nah. But I'm telling you, man and woman, God, don't get carried away. Don't get carried away. Don't get carried away by every wind doctrine. Everything that blows, that, that's got breath. You got to line it up. And you really got to understand what's going on in the season and times you're in. The word of God comes down in this particular 18 verse. Let's look at this. 
And when it came down to Elijah, when it came down to him, Elijah prayed unto the Lord. Now, this is how a real true person, this is how a real true man of God does to his enemy. This is how he does his enemy. You know, the Bible says, pray for those who despitefully use you. And the word of God says in the 18 verse, when it came down to him, Elijah prayed unto the Lord and said, smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness and smote them with blindness according to the word of Elijah. Listen to what's going on here. And Elijah said unto them, this is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me and I will bring you to the men whom you seek. He led them to Samaria. Now, just think about this particular word. This, this particular army was supposed to be an army that was going to besiege Samaria. This was the army that was put in place that's supposed to besiege Samaria, according to what's been said by the man of God over there, the king of Syria. They're supposed to be in the army that's supposed to besiege Samaria. So the word of God kindly says in the 18th verse, no, I'm not going to kill you, but I'm going to blind you, and I'm going to lead you to the city which you need to be in. Look at the ninth, look at the 20th verse. The Bible says they came to, they came to, they came past, and when it came to pass, and they came to Samaria, and Elijah said to the Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the men, and they saw, and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria, your enemy has now become your footstool. These men came victim to the people who they're supposed to actually besiege, that the king of Syria had allowed them to first try to go take out Elijah, but they got a, they got a, they got a surprise. They got surprise awakening because now God put his army over them. And in the process, in those particular verses, as we saw over there in a the particular 18 verse, the Bible declared the creed, they smarted them with blindness. And in the 19 verse, the Bible said, follow, Elijah said, follow me. I'm going to take you to the place in which you're, which you're supposed to besiege, but that's not going to happen. We look over in the area of the 20th verse. When you get to the place, the very place they're supposed to actually uh, besiege, they was inside their gates in the midst of them. Now, listen to me. This was an enemy that's supposed to be going against Samaria. This word of God tells you when you're praying, he said, pray for your enemies and pray for those who despitefully use you. Because by doing that, you will reap cold over their head. What is this prophet telling you? What is this apostle telling you? You're never supposed to have vendetta or negativity or pray down or against your enemy. Your job is to understand that it wasn't by the Lord that this came about. It was by the hands of the enemy who's tried to lead them into you to find a situation where they can tear you down. But it was it, it was it was a bamboozle. It was trick. It was turned. By the hands of God. God took what's supposed to be the enemy and turned him into your favor. Look what happened when they came inside the gates of the very place they're supposed to besiege. It says in the 21st verse over here in the book of uh, 2 Kings, in the 6th chapter 21. And the king of Syria said, Elijah, when I saw them, my father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? Hold on. Look what he says in the, 20 verse, in the 22nd verse. And he answered, thou shalt not smite them. Would thou smite those who thou hast captive with thy sword and with thy bow? Set bread and water before them that they may eat and drink and go then and go to their master. This this is powerful. The very places that the king of Syria was setting up his men and his henchmen to go down to besiege Samaria, but they ran into one called Elijah, who was given information from the inside their chambers, so he switched their focus. So it was by, it was by plan and divine plan that they didn't go tax Samaria because they got an inside word who they thought they had a snitch. But that snitch was the prophet Elijah. And it was told by one of their own men within their own camp that it was Elijah who hears everything in your bedchamber. Man and woman, God, I'm trying to get you to understand something. That when the enemy tries to come at you, God will let you know who and what it is that's speaking bad words against you. And all you have to do is pray for them. When you pray for them, God will cause them to fall in such a way that you need to pray for them to bring them out. You'll be trying to set bread before them.
And when you set bread before them and the anger they had before you, they'll go with love. They'll go with love and they'll spread that love to somebody else. The Bible declared the creed in the 23rd verse, he said he prepared great provisions before them. And when they ate and drank and they sent them away and they went to their master. So look here. So the bands of Syrians came no more unto the land of Israel. They wasn't even going to mess with anymore because a word that came through the mouth of a prophet. They looked to go and try to besiege these men and women got in Samaria, but they was altered by a word was spoken inside their camp, which they thought they had a snitch. And one of their own camp members spoke a word out. Listen how the divine word goes. Spoke out against who it was that's caused them to give out their information about the, what they was doing. And they said, no, nah, well, we're going to go get the one who gave the information. They said, where is it? He's in Dolph. Get your chariots. Get your armies. Let's go down and let's get them. Elijah service comes out to camp that morning. Paraphrasing the story. He looks up with amazement. Because of what he saw. Elijah steps out the camp with a possibility of what they said. What is Psalms 37? Fight not thyself because of evildoers, nor envy thyself because of the workers of iniquity. God will fight your battles. Elijah looked at them and said, No, you don't understand, son. The army we got is a lot more greater than their army. So whenever you come into a situation in your life, when it seems like you're dealing with a phantom on your life or something that's coming at you. You got to first realize the army that you can call up and douse the hands of the enemy who's coming against you in such a way they will turn to a point they will bow down and be your footstool. Man and women, God, I'm not talking to you, every one of y'all on tonight. You got to believe in the midst of whatever it may be that's going on in your life that seems too impossible. I believe the word of God declares the creeds according to Jeremiah 32 and 17. Is there anything too hard for me to do? The Bible said according to what he's given you with Jeremiah uh, 1 and 5, based with Jeremiah 29 and 11, which you got the plans and the thoughts that's coming from God. According to Romans 4 and 17, being the prophet, according to Jeremiah 1 and 5, to be a prophet before the nation. God said within that package, you got the ability to speak and call things in position that's out of position that be not of their word. Didn't he say that every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God will go forth? It will not come back void, but it is an accomplishing word according to the believer. Man and woman, God, you got to learn how to believe. This particular story is a very example how God can turn your enemy into a footstool. Don't tell me he can't do it. Don't tell me he won't do it. I tell you, man and woman, God, it's always a pleasure for you guys to be with us here at HNLC Studios here in the city of Plano, Texas. With my beautiful wife, Pastor Patty Ellis, and my team, uh, uh, with uh, the little one out in our BTR station, the men that got Alan Carter, all the other preachers, all the other apostles, and that be with us, Apostle Walker, Apostle um, uh, Walt, Walt, Apostle Walker, Walters. We thank God for him. All those men who support us and keep us going. Dr. James Kickhart. We got our ordinations coming up here soon. We hoping that's going to come into fruition the way they should. We got everything lined up and everything ready to go. We're just waiting on the word of the Lord to do things the way we need to get done. And we're going to move forward. And all other ministers that's out there that's with us. And I tell you, man, what we've got, don't look here. If you're going to come be a part of HNLC Studios and you don't feel that we're in part of what you need to do, don't stay with it. Move to where you feel that you can get your help. There's a lot of ministers I have. There's a lot of people I work with. And sometimes when it seems to be scarce in certain areas, you don't quite get the finances that you need, the things you have to have. Don't be so quick to give up. The word of God says, if it's going to be the work that's in you, and he prepared for you, then he's going to complete the work until the day of Jesus Christ. Fight not thyself because of evil doers. Don't get envy and distress about the things that God has put in your hand because the word of God says he's going to prepare for you what you need. He may send somebody to help you. And I believe we're here to help most of those who are helping us out. But look, we're not we're not just called to everybody. There's other men and women God that's out there who you need to pray with and find out if God's calling you to be with them. Sometimes we can't deliver to you like we should. And you know what? We don't get upset about that. We let you know. You need to pray. If there's finances needed in your ministries, the people need to be fed in your ministry, trust God. He provided. He'll give you everything you need. Our job is to direct you and show you and get you to understand that the work in you is really more than what you can see. Man, the woman God is just a blessing to be with you at 18 Studios. Until then, y'all be blessed.